Hello, welcome to this JavaScript tutorial where I'm going to play around with Tone.js. Um, usually in a tutorial I've kind of worked things out and um, I'll break them down in, in simple steps and things like that. But this one, kind of more like a, a devlog kind of thing. Um, I've had a look at the website and I've seen a very simple example of how to use Tone.js and I thought I'd see if I can add some sound to this little uh, pen, this little um, JavaScript um, thing that I've made. It's running a little bit slow here because I'm recording and things like that. Um, I'll put a link in the description so you can go and play around with the code yourself. Right, this is just hosted on CodePen where we can I can code down here and um, this will be updated live. So the first thing we need to do is go and get hold of the Tone JS um, library. So here's tonejs.github.io um, and it's got examples and everything you need. So what we're kind of looking for, I think I can um, I can run this kind of in the browser. No, I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong place to run these examples in the browser. Anyway, um, we want to go to GitHub. Um, again, I'll give you a link. Oh, I suppose you could find it yourself, but I'll, I'll give you a link to get to Tone.js GitHub. And here we'll have... Um, all the documentation you need, probably in the README. There you go. Loads of documentation. Um, there's a download to get hold of it yourself, um, etc., etc. Right, and we want to do this kind of thing. We want to create um, a synth and connect it to a master output and then create kind of like a little tone when our Donkey Kong does something. I was just thinking, can we get a tone every time he jumps? And then maybe I want to push to see what we can do. Maybe we could make a tone every time he collides with one of these, um, one of these like circles. Okay, that's the idea anyway. Right, so first thing we need to do is go and get hold of the API, right. Um, um, I could, let's download the minimum version. So this is gonna be nice and small. Oh, here he is. I wonder, can I just copy all of this and let's put him into a new um, code pen. Oh, I've got, if this doesn't work, um, I'll, I'll continue what I was doing. In code pen, if you go into settings and then into JavaScript, you can then, as I've already kind of done here, you can add um, resources. So I wonder if they've got available Tone.js. Let's just have a look. Oh, do I have to? Sorry, I'm doing this in the wrong place. Tone JS. Oh, brilliant. There we go. So it's already got a link to the Cloudflare. Brilliant. So that's how we can link to our library. Once you've done that, um, you can now add your Tone JS um, stuff to your project. So here's my project quite small. We've got, um, I'm using uh, P5, uh, the P5 library. So I've got a setup function, which is where our program will start. It's very messy. <laughs> and then I've got a draw loop. So this function loops around and around. And I'm doing things like drawing the background black, um, updating my physics objects, which is our, our Donkey Kong here, and all of these little balls, which I can throw around individually. Um, which are all controlled by the Matter.js library. So I've got at least two libraries going on. Um, I'm doing things like checking the keys. So once you've clicked the canvas element here, you can use your arrow keys if you're on a laptop or something, and you can jump around. Okay, so that's the basis of what's going on. So actually, when I jump, um, let's see, when, where is it? Up arrow. Um, if jump is ready. So here, I want to be able to trigger my synth um, via tone.js. So I want, I want to say something like um, create tone. Right, so let's go back to, we don't need this anymore. <laughs> we need the instructions. Hello tone. So like a hello world kind of thing. So create a new synth. So this is kind of the, what do they call it? Bootstrapping or doing the basic setup kind of stuff. There we go. Um, so we want to put this in setup actually. 
So set up, I'll say, once I've created my canvas, let's say, um, I don't need a comment here because I'm just going to write the function. Set up tone. I'll need to write that function down here. Function set up tone. There we go, created a function called set up tone. And in here we can paste, um, let's go ES6. <laughs> Let. There's no point in making that change. Let synth equal a new tone dot synth to master. So this is referring to our speakers, the master audio out. Okay, so I don't really need to understand how that works and I don't really understand how that works. Um, but that's all we have to do to set up tone. Now, back in my jump code. My God, this is messy, isn't it? There we go. I want to create a tone there. So I should be able to use something like this. So this says, play a middle C for the duration of an eighth note. So what we'll do just to begin, we'll just copy that in and give it a go to make sure things are working at least. Um, I'm just going to save this in case it crashes and explodes. Right. Which it has kind of done. <laughs> oh, I know why it's not working. Synth um, is not a global variable. And that has that. Donkey Kong is not happy with this. Um, so in setup tone, we need to take this out and just say synth equals that. And then just above it, I think I'll put let synth. There we go. Okay, now save. Right, so we can still drag our our favorite gorilla around. And this time if I press up, I don't know if you heard that, let me <laughs> uh, bring up the speakers. Huh. That's got a really nice 8-bit kind of sound. Lovely. There we go. Thank you, Tone JS. That's really cool. Right. Um, so what's what's really nice about this example is that this function trigger attack release. It kind of covers um, attacking the key, so like <laughs> starting the starting the tone, but also releasing, which is controlled with this second parameter. 8n. So if we put 4n, I don't know any music theory, will that be half as long? Half half as long? Or twice as long? You never know with music. Here we go. Oh, I've got to click on the canvas before I can use the keys. I think that's... I don't know. I can't even tell. It might be too quiet for you. Let's put 16. Then we'll get a definite difference. Will it be a sixteenth of a note? Yes, that's a lot quicker. Okay. So eight, there we go. So documentation uh, plays a middle C, C4, for the duration of an eighth note. Um, and you can do lots and lots of things with Tone.js. So um, I think I'm going to stop the this tutorial, although everything that I've used here is kind of uh, <laughs> it's kind of covered in Tone.js's own documentation. They've got, by the way, um, loads of demos and examples and it can do a lot more. We can, we've got MIDI, um, we've got um, lots of different instruments, um, which I'm definitely going to have a play around with. So what would just be cool is to have two different tones. Um, so let's say every time there's a collision, I'm going to copy this bit of code. Right, I've all, already got a collision um, detection system kind of set up here. Um, is that at the bottom? There we go. Um,
Okay, this is basically every time something's hitting um, Donkey Kong. This is a bit of a risk. Let's play, not C4, let's go for A8. It's quite high. Um, and then quite a, we need quite a, a short tone. Don't know if you can have a 30s tooth. Oh. That's really high. Sorry, God. <laughs> I'm really sorry. That's better. That's kind of cool. So you can see how that's working. Um, That's kind of nice. Um, what do I want to do? Oh yeah. We could kind of make this random. Oh, it'd be nice to kind of make this random or something. Or not happen so often. Let's just happen, um, I don't know, a sixteenth of the time or something. No. Yeah, I don't know. If uh, frame count uh, modulus, I don't know, 16 equals zero, then you can do that. Should reload in a second. Ah, there we go. Okay, now we've re we've reduced him. Uh, how often, how frequent those collisions can happen. Um, it kind of detaches the sense that the sound is being made when you were making the, uh, the collision. So I've increased it again. Which is a little better. I think it should only happen when he hits the sides. I think that would be better. Um, so let's take that away. Um, let's comment that out. And let's say, um, if uh, bod a dot label equals uh, dk, I know, if bod, sorry, that should be bod b, uh, equals dk, and um, bod a label equals, we'll call it uh, bound, then, uh, then we want to play that. Play that tone. Okay. Um, so all we've got to do now, I'm just going to make sure that my um, bounds, so the the window bounds are invisible. Although you can see the ground bound, the green is um, is um, a solid 2D physics object as well. So maybe I think the first five objects are kind of created behind the scenes in my Matter.js uh, body array. So I think at startup, um, when I say red hen 2D physics set up Matter, I create some window bounds if this parameter, sorry, is true. But I think I also create a body in the sense of the mouse has a constraint attached to it so that you can kind of pick up bodies and things like that. So I think that's, so the top bound, bottom bound, left and right, so that's four plus the mouse, so it's the first five. So, or, or rather, not the first body, so not body zero, but one, two, three, and four. So I think I can say something like, um, bod um, one, um, label, 
Uh, what did I call it? Bound, yes. Oh, bods. That's the name of the array that I'm using. Bods. Oh, and I spelled label wrong. <laughs> that didn't go very well. <laughs> there we go. Um, so we've got to go and find this tone. Ah! Oh, brilliant! <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite pleased with that. So a collision's working. Um, bound one has got its, the correct label. The so should I should have the right bods here. A bit a bit of a problem if I'm trying to refer to a body in the array that doesn't exist, which might have happened now. So maybe I was wrong. Maybe it's body zero, body one. Body two and body three. So maybe it wasn't the mouse constraint counting as a body. Just need to give uh, Coke Pen some time to catch up. Okay, save that now. Oh, it just hit the gr ground, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So it kind of increases the sense of an 8-bit game as well. Right, I'm going to stop the video there. Um, I hope some of that was, was useful for uh, just getting started with Tone.js and maybe other libraries as well. Right, thank you very much. Thank you to Tone.js.